Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all still being safe and staying at home as much as you can. Um, one thing I wanted to take a look at today is revisiting the alarm section. So remember, we did set up that BW alarm. However, with the recent updates and changes to Home Assistant, that integration would no longer function, or it does function like it normally would. The only difference is we can't access the user interface to uh, set up the alarm, so we need to use the YAML file. But if you're like me, you don't like to mess with the YAML file, you would just go in and set up something real simple. And luckily there was someone that went in and did create an additional option for us to use. What I'll do is we can take a look today at setting that up and go from there. There we go guys. So we're back in our Home Assistant installation, or my Home Assistant installation. It looks Maybe it looks a bit different, but it should also essentially function exactly the same as yours. Uh, the only difference is I'll just quickly show you how we're going to go in and add that uh, new alarm function. So this is my guy. I think is I'm hoping I'm not going to mutilate his name, but I think it's Niels Faber. What he did was he created a additional add-on or a custom component that we can go in and use to set up our alarm with the user interface instead of using the YAML code. The setup is fairly simple. He does explain everything in here how we need to set this up. So we do have all the information. In order to do this, it's fairly quick to set up. What we'll do is we'll go down here. You'll see we have installation. We can just download the latest release right here. We can scroll a bit down. And just click on assets if it doesn't expand for some reason. We can download alarm o zip and that should start downloading. Sorry, it's opening up on a different monitor. And once we have that, we can just move that into our Home Assistant installation. So to do that, like always, if you have watched my previous videos, you can open up your Simba shared you set up with the add-on. In my case, it's just the IP address of my Pi and it opens up this. What we do is we go into our config folder right here. And then if you have set up hacks already or previously, you should have an option in here that's called custom components or a folder in here. You don't need to have X just as long as you have the custom components folder in here. You can open it up and as you can see this is where you place all your custom components. So in that zip file we can open up the specific zip file in there and then once we have that open we can just drag that alarm o file or folder from that zip file straight over into the custom components. And that should be it. So now we should be ready to, to use that in our Home Assistant installation. Fairly simple, straightforward setup. So let's quickly just go in and restart Home Assistant before we can integrate it into our interface. To that, we'll just go to configuration and then server controls to restart. There we go. So while Home Assistant is starting up, before, we, before I show you how to add that into our installation, a quick note. All the other information or the automations that I've previously set up should also function exactly the same. We're only replacing the actual interface that we're using. So as long as we're still using the alarm panel, we should all be fine. Uh, you can still use the exact same automations that I've set up previously in the other videos. The only difference is we're not going to use BW alarm. We're going to use the alarm O function in there. One thing to do, keep in mind is guys, again, if we do update or if something does go wrong, um, you may run into some issues along the line, as also stated by him that this is still in very early stages. There's a lot of things that could go wrong with it. For now, what I would suggest is, if it's working, don't update until you are definitely sure that you will still be able to have this functionality after you have updated your Home Assistant installation. That's the case for most stuff with Home Assistant. You know, growing pains is something that does go through a lot of software, especially if they are growing at a massive rate. And I can tell you that Home Assistant is definitely growing at a massive rate. So once Home Assistant restarted, what we'll do in here is we can go back to our config, then click on integrations. So we already copied that information over. So what we'll do from here is we can click on the plus sign right behind my camera. In here, you should see an option for alarm O we can click on. It's going to ask us to which room we want to add it to. It's not necessary. We can just click on finish and that will add that on here. 
There we go. And once that has uh, been added to your Home Assistant installation, you should see it listed right here, Alarm O. And then you should also see it did create a Alarm O panel all the way to the right hand side. Um, you may notice that I changed something in here real quick. Uh, I just changed the theme to, to make it a bit easier to read for you guys. So what we can do in here, if we click on Alarm O right now, that's when we're going to go in and configure and set up the alarm itself. This is extremely simple to set up. Obviously, 30 minutes, that's for how long the alarm is going to stay triggered until it goes back to the armed state, unless you want to change it to disarm once it has been triggered. Now, obviously, you definitely do not want to do that. If it gets triggered and it'll stay triggered for 30 minutes and then go back to being armed, you can reduce this time. So, especially if you have an actual alarm entity or an actual alarm siren then you also do have the option to enable mqtt um, i may get a separate video for that um, that's just setting up mqtt and you can control it through sending messages via mqtt armed away obviously we have those two states we have armed away armed home that's when you are home armed away if everyone is going to leave the house you're arming the house because you're going away so what here we have is leave time and entry time what that is, it's going to ask us, as soon as we activate the alarm, maybe you're using a manual code or you're using a uh, display that you have set up, if you enter in the pin or if you click on arm home, or, well, arm away, it'll give you the option to set a number of seconds you need to leave the house. So it won't arm instantly, it will wait a while, so because you still need to move out of the house so it won't allow you to get out of the house it'll just instantly trigger if you're still inside the house so for example i'm going to set that to 10 seconds so once i arm the home i have 10 seconds to get out before it will be armed the same with entry time you can do exactly the same you can add some 10 seconds or 30 seconds is usually the default i'm just setting it to center so i can show you guys um, but usually I'll set that to 30 seconds. So enter in the pin or click on arm, leave the house, and then it'll be enabled once I have left. Once you get back in, if you don't have anything to remotely disable it as you open the door, and you can specify these specific sensors as well. As soon as you open up the door, it'll give you that 30 seconds or 10 seconds in this case to disable the alarm before it will trigger. Arm night mode is just an additional option you can enable. It's not really necessary. You can use arm home for that, meaning that it's a different type of alarm. So say, for example, you enabled armed home that you can use for just specific sensors. So say you want to arm when you are all at home. So you can arm certain areas or certain specific sensors and window sensors that doesn't affect you guys that's still inside the house. So maybe you're going to bed at night you can arm it while you're still inside the house, meaning that if someone opens up a door or a window that goes to the outside, it will still trigger, or you can just arm it uh, for specific sections of the house itself. So uh, you can still move around without triggering the alarm, but if someone tries to get in from the outside, it will trigger the alarm. So with these, you definitely don't need a leave or entry time unless you really have it set up in a weird position. And then you can also add in a custom one if you really want to. So moving on to the actual sensors. This is where we go in and add the sensors that we're using for our alarm. This is fairly simple. We can just check off the sensors that we're going to use. So what I'll do in here is I'll just click on add to alarm. And there we go. So that has been added to the alarm. So to configure or edit any of these, you can click on it. And you'll see it gives you a couple of options in here. So what we do in here is we have the name of that sensor. You can literally edit it. Not really net necessary. What we're looking for is the modes. So remember we have that two modes, armed away and armed home. By default, all of them will be checked. Mine, I think mine's already set up, so we have the setup. So away and home, meaning that these will be active when we are away or home. Then we have the immediate option. So remember when we set it up, it asks us to give a delay before it arms the home. 
So that's what it is for. So when you come back into the house, obviously this is a bedroom window. So we're not going to go into the house with this on the alarm. When we come into the house, we'll go through the front door, then disable the alarm. So if someone tries to go into the bedroom window, it needs to trigger immediately. We don't need a 30 second delay. It needs to trigger immediately. And that's what this option is for. The only sensors you're really going to set that up for is say for example the kitchen PIR our bathroom is right next to the kitchen so we're walking past it the whole time so armed home when we are home we don't need to have that enabled because we are going to work to the bathroom back and forth so we can't enable that because then we're going to trigger it the whole time when we're home so but when we're away it definitely needs to be enabled then with immediate also, my front door is in the kitchen, so we come in there. I don't need to have it to trigger immediately. I need to have this set on that delay. So when someone opens up the front door and comes in, it needs to be it needs to give us that 30 seconds or 10 seconds in this case time code before it triggers the alarm. So that's the way mine sets up. So the only two sensors that I actually have uh, three sensors that I need to give that time frame on is going to be the kitchen PIR because that's where we would come in to manually disable the alarm by using a panel we are going to go into the kitchen so we also need to check at the kitchen door and as you can see the immediate is turned off meaning that it will allow us to go into the kitchen and then turn that off then with the other sensors, sensors we have in here is going to be the living room PIR. We work through the living room to get to the bathroom, so through the kitchen. So that is also only armed when we are away. When we're home, we don't need that to be enabled. But we can set this one to immediately trigger when there is movement because we do not need to move through the a living room to get outside or to get in to disarm the alarm. Once you're happy with that setup, nothing stopping you from coming back in and modifying it later. We still need to go in and click on the codes section right here. Now one cool thing with this is we can add additional users so you'll be able to know exactly who was the person that armed and disarmed it. I don't really care for that so I'll just add one user. Um, use arm code usually don't recommend using that you just press the button that says arm unless you want to know who armed it and give them their specific code but for this one i don't need to have an armed code i just want a disarm code then it's going to ask us to input the pin code so it's definitely a pin code in lovelace it's not a password unless you want to put on a password we'll use pin code and then user management we need to add the users so in here i literally can just call it admin for example then give it that code 1234 1234 user is an administrator meaning that they will be able to make changes hit save and obviously if you want them to be able to disarm and arm the alarm if it's an admin they can do both so hit save and now this is an active user for the alarm and then in the code option one thing to keep in mind i'm not sure if it's something with the code or it's intentional but use arm code for some reason it feels to me like it is reversed or should be the other way around um i enabled use arm code meaning that i need to use the code for disarming i think these are the wrong way around on my one um, i'm not sure if it's the same with you if you do have a problem with needing to enter the code to disarm it or to arm it um just check with these buttons so which way is on or off because on my end, I need to put it up, use it to support arming the alarm, and then to disarm, I don't need a code. But in my case, it's the other way around. So just double check on that. Um, it's just a small fix. So to add it to our installation or to have an interface to interface with the alarm, we can go back to overview real quick. I'll just edit that and add the alarm panel right here. I'm going to leave everything as is, just hit save, and there we go. So now we do have that alarm in here. So if I hit arm away, it should wait 10 seconds before arming the house, and then we should be armed or active. The alarm should be active. Then obviously to disarm the code, what we'll do is we'll type in the pin code that we created, 
and then click on disarm and that will deactivate the alarm one additional thing that they did implement really cool is with the actions so you can go in and add in a notification so you can get notifications depending on specific events so if there is disarmed or armed and it's really cool the way they set it up you literally just type in the message and you select which in uh, which type of notification should be sent so if you have your phones connected or you have telegram connected you can literally just type in the message and say to who that needs to be sent and there we go guys so that should be it for this one i hope there was some information in there that you guys can use to set up your own alarms as i've said it is still in very early access and uh, there may go something wrong or there may be some bugs in it but if you're like me you really just want an interface to set everything up then this is the way to go at the moment um, if you guys do get stuck or do have any questions feel free to ask below i'll try to respond as fast as i can and i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week